my face because I'm finally getting ready to uh, prep for some upcoming upgrades to the Twin Turbo 5.7. Uh, let me show you guys some of the things that we have on deck for the Twin Turbo 5.7. Over here, you'll see. What's that? What's that? It's that Fuel Tech standalone ECU. Uh, you'll see here that I'm setting on. Uh, these are some Apache heads that I'm going to port. Um, you'll see here some PSI 1515 springs. If I can keep everything straight here for these heads, um, I have to order. Actually, I have to order some. Uh, did I just lose? Oh, here we go. Um, I have to order some valve springs, both intake and exhaust, because I don't have enough and they're broken. But that's fine. Over here, you'll see the JE pistons, all brand new pistons. Over here, you'll see these are, uh, this is the, the brand new to me. I haven't opened it yet, but this is the comp cams cam shaft. Uh, we have the rods from Manly right here. Let me open this up and show you guys so you know that I'm not just making these things up. These are the Manly uh, H-Tough Series rods. Uh, hopefully that shows up. Um, but these are a 927 bushed pen uh, with the Hellcat. Uh, I'm sorry, Hellcat. With the stock 6.4 big end. So, so that's two 125 big end. Um, usually when you have a stroker crank. We have a stroker crank, you'll have a 2 100 uh, big end, but that's a 2 125 because we're using a stock forged um, six fork uh, crank. So, no need to get the turn down uh, bearings. Here you'll see, you see uh, rod bearings for it. Um, and then, one of the things I'm most excited about, haven't opened this up yet, but this is the uh, Bang Shift Billy di Digital Clutch Controller. Uh, so what this does, what that does is instead of me having to slip my clutch or whatever, uh, so it uses the hydraulic fluid to slip the clutch for you. So that is a game changer there. It's consistency. Uh, once you get it dialed in, your 60 foots will probably remain the same um, or pretty constant to the same. So that takes a lot of human error out of it and makes the makes a manual launch uh, similar to an automatic uh, with a trans brake. So for me, I get up to 3,800 RPMs. Um, and my two-step and then it starts popping and banging and uh doing anti-lag uh that's programmed into my tune currently uh we'll build about six pounds of boost five to six pounds of boost then i just dump the clutch instead of having to manually slip it and then uh it will slip the the hydraulic fluid will hold the throw out bearing and allow it to slip for me given a consistent 60 foot time once that's dialed in you can kind of tune for that and uh cut your 60 foot times down just eliminating a variable so i'm really really excited about that but not as much as i am about this here is my 2013 block and i want you guys to see how clean this thing is so in here are the wow i don't even know where i was at but guys i want you guys to see how easy this guy turns over Look at this. Look at how beautiful that turns over. Look at how beautiful. No effort whatsoever. Uh, super smooth. You can see all the fact, all the fact. Of course, I dropped it. All of the factory markings right here. Um, this is a hundred percent stock six four. If I wanted to, I could just put the gaskets back on it. Uh, throw a stock set of Apache heads on here. <laughs> And put it in my car, honestly. Um, but I, I can't run boost with that. And who wants a 6.4 with no boost? I certainly don't. Uh, in any event, we're going to take this guy apart. I've already taken off the oil pan, the pickup tube for the oil pump. It's all right here. Uh, I'm sure you guys can see that. I took off the balancer. And the rear main seal is also off, as you can see right here. Uh, the rear main seal is off. So once I remove the bolts, the four bolts up top and then the side bolts, we can actually start getting ready to pull the crank. But first I got to pull the front cover off. Um, and then we'll start knocking the pistons out one at a time um, and get the crank out. So all this is necessary. 
um, because I don't have drop-ins. I've recommended drop-ins before to you guys. Um, I have a custom set of uh, manly rods, manly H tough rods, and um, JE pistons. Uh, the compression ratio on my pistons are a one two ten. The the length on my rods are a six two hundred, which is a factory uh, six four st stroke or crank rather. I'm sorry, rod length. Wow, I can't get anything right. So the factory six four stroke is actually three seven two, which that's what this crank is a three seven two inch. Uh, crank it's forged from the factory so we reused that we put new uh main and rod bearings in it with the h tough rods and the je pistons um it's going to come in right at 10 to 1 10 and a half to 1 um i'll use my comedic five layer multi-layer steel gaskets on this deal i'll put a new rendage tray on this steel uh we'll throw a new water pump on it um a new timing chain in there uh with timing chain guides i like to use the metal guides which i have <laughs> And uh, my parts bin, I buy like buy them in bulk. So I have like five sets of those. Well, I had five sets. I built two engines, so I got like three left. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll put the metal time and chain in there just to make sure that everything stays in time. Um, we'll install the the bad A comp cams, 229, 241 uh, cam in there on a 117 LSA. Uh, and we're going to do some some uh hand porting some custom blending with uh the apache heads that i have there one of them is pretty well where i want it the other one i have to do a little bit of, of touch-up work on but i'll get that done um i may polish it i need to put new intake and exhaust valves in there so what i'm probably going to do uh here is my bge block so i'm probably going to take the valves out of this vge block have them cleaned up and then put those guys and the heads over there with the PSI 1515 springs. Um, I literally just ordered a new set of uh, larger valves for these BGE heads. I'm going to make these heads um, similar to what Titec does. Uh, they run a 220. Uh, you can get various sizes, but their biggest, biggest is a 220. I'm going to run a 2180 on, uh, on these heads for intake. And then I'll stick with the 165 for the exhaust uh, and make these guys my, my uh, not cheap, but my, um, my economical uh, boost heads. I'm look, looking to get big power out of those. We're gonna do some hand blending and a custom port job on those, but that's not for this build. That's for my uh, Dakota build. We'll talk about that when that time comes. Um, what we're gonna do with this block is we're gonna get it all, all situated, all cleaned up. Uh, as best I can, and then I'll probably take it to Clinton. Have wow, sorry about the light. <laughs> have them also pressure t or not pressure check it, check it, but uh, uh, just give it a, a steam bath, put it in the hot tank or whatever, just so that all the ports are cleaned out of it. And then we'll have a fresh new block. I'll get it back and I will, um, I'll hone it. I, I'll hone it here with my dingleberry hone. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get it uh, line honed because I do have main studs that I'm going to run on this block. Um, and I'm going to put a new set of thrust washers in it uh, just because I want everything brand new so that everything wears at the same the same rate and we're good. So that's the next thing. And then I'll put uh, either Hellcat or Hellcat 170, not 170, uh, Hellcat or um, Red Eye main bearings in it uh based on what the what the crank calls for so sit tight i'm gonna get this crank out and show you guys how how that looks and what goes on there and then we'll go on from there all right sit tight all right guys i'm back and i just wanted to show you that i got the front cover off uh it's sitting there on the floor right over there there's a bunch of the bolts that you got to take out that kind of go around the perimeter here of the block and up through here, 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 bottom, bottom, top. Um, and it's just really easy to to kind of kind of lose your way. So just kind of take your time when you're doing that. Um, they're, they're, all the bolts that come out are pretty long as opposed to the short ones. I never pull off the water pump. As you can see, the water pump is still on there. 
Um, I'm not even going to use that front cover. I'm going to use the one that's on the 5.7 right now. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that that cover, but the one on the 5.7 is powder coated. So we're going to use that and uh, kind of keep it looking a little bit nice. Um, but here is the oil pump and it's for 13 millimeters. And then you can look at this. this is, you can tell that this is a factory block. It's still got the factory orange tensioner guide. That's awesome. Um, here's the tensioner bolts. These are 10. There's two here. There's one here and then there's one behind the oil pump. So you take the oil pump off first with the 13s and I'll do that now on camera. That's not going to take too hard. Uh, just for a matter of reference, um, I ended up having to use my little rubber mallet there to kind of gently tap the, uh, the front cover. Um, sometimes they're on there, especially when it's factory and it's all factory sealed, uh, it might be a little tight. So you might get, have to give it a little gentle persuasion, but nothing, nothing difficult. Literally just tapped it right here on the back right there and it popped off. I had my hand here to catch it like this. Uh, just gave it a little, like, it was like one tap and it came right loose. So. That was pretty cool. I was excited about that. Here we go. We're going to get this guy here. You guys can see. These are whatever the factory specs are for the year. And now you can see it's loose. You can see the oil starting to drip out. I got the pan going. So we're good there. Slide this deal out. And bam, we're done. That's simple, guys. Um, there's a torque spec for that. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. I would have to go get um, uh, some of my notes. Um, but yeah, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these tensioners off. Um, and then I can slide the bottom oil oil uh, gear off. Uh, I can take off the... I don't even have to take this off right now. Um, I'll leave the cam the cam uh, phaser on for right now because I don't need to take that off yet um, especially for what I'm trying to do I'm just trying to get the crank out so yeah that's what I'll do I'll uh, I'll take the tensioners off take this guy off take the time chain off and then I can flip this guy back upside down and start working on getting the getting the rod and uh, pistons out which I'm going to need that mallet for it anyway so that ends up working out well as you can see it's a little bit dirty here i don't know what happened um but i'll take all of these sensors out and when i bring it to the machine shop uh and get it hot tank they'll clean all of that up that's what why you hot tank it and then you also want to clean up all the little past like this one's fine uh this one's fine but in the back back here you can see the passage has a little bit of coolant that kind of got in there uh, and then this one as well, coolant got in there. Um, and it's just kind of solidified over time. It's not a big deal. It, uh, I could probably scrape that out, but I just want to start with a super clean slate. Um, when I got this block, the first time I bought it, I pulled off the MDS solenoids because I hate them, uh, especially when you're a manual guy. So there's that. That's why these are in here. Uh, I put these in here. Um, so that, that makes it that much easier. But these lifters are non MDS lifters. So I'm going to pull those guys out when I go to swap the cam and slide either Hellcat MDS lifters in there or Johnson lifters. Not sure yet which way I'm going to go. Um, so we'll, we'll figure that part out when the time comes uh, for right now. I just want to do what I need to do to get this guy ready for assembly. So that's where we're at with it. But... Cool, sit tight and I'll show you uh, the progress. So I'm back, just wanted to show you guys that uh, I ran into a little problem. Um, I did not know that this deal, this is uh, the oil filter, was gonna be such a pain in the neck. I did not have the proper tool to take this deal off. So I had to go out to my local Harbor Freight and grab a 12 millimeter long socket. This one happens to be an impact socket for, uh, obviously for impacts. Oh, of course I'm gonna drop stuff. So yeah, 
So we are going to knock this guy out and hopefully we can get to the last bolt on the side for the main and then we'll be good. Let's see how this works out for me. It's a pretty interesting looking bolt. I've never had to deal with one of these specific uh, oil cooler equipped units. So we're just gonna put that down there. Doesn't really matter to me. And then it comes right on off. So what I'm gonna have to do is get the normal uh, oil filter housing, the oil, uh, the, the sock, the, the bolt that goes here. That's not a big deal. That's like a $12 part or whatever, what have you. Um, what I'll do is I'll just stick this back on there for now. Cause why not? But it's not too terrible to get that bolt, but that's good now. So now we can actually get this t last 10 side uh, main bolt. And then uh, we take the mains off and we're ready to try to pull, pull the crank. Well, that's not true. Um, we still gotta take the rods off and then we'll be ready to pull the crank, but just catch you in a little bit. All right, guys, I'm back, um, and I just finished pulling out the pistons from uh, the 6.4 because we're trying to get this guy the crank out. I've got the first uh, main girdle off, and I've got four more to go. Um, I just wanted to show you guys the, the journals on this deal and how beautiful they look. I mean, there's oil on there, but they're, it is smooth as a baby's bottom. Uh, remember the last video where I was ranting about uh, what you never do on a crank? Look at this. This is the same number eight journal where it's open for the oil to drain when we saw that it was uh, welded on the other one. So that's just a quick uh observation you can see this is in this is this block is flawless this block has as clean as a whistle um i have found nothing wrong with this block but i knew it, it there was nothing wrong with it because i heard it run when i pulled it um i got all eight of the pistons out here i couldn't show you guys that because i was i needed two hands and it just it, it was hard but if you look at this bearing right here all the way around all of them look exactly like this hardly anywhere if you look at the side skirts on this piston right here you see the side skirts barely anywhere this is a low mileage engine i don't know how many miles are on it but they're all the same they're all barely anywhere no nowhere on the side skirts uh bearings look perfect if i wanted to i could take these pistons along with this crank over here um, i would just clean that crank up a bit but i could drop that into the fire the fire 6.4 and have a 6.4 short block on standby, um, a stock 6.4 stamp short block on standby. But since it has no pistons and it has no crank, I'm going to just put a uh, forged rods and um, a decent set of forged pistons in it because it's, it's stupid not to. But any event, I just wanted to show you guys uh, kind of taking it apart. Unfortunately, I didn't set up my tripod and I couldn't show you guys me taking the pistons out but it's really simple there's two number 11s um you take them off you save the bearing and then you push from one angle like here if you're trying to go there you push at an angle um what i used was the back the blunt end of my half inch and i just kind of pushed downward with one hand and then very carefully making sure that i had the other hand here to catch and then it's just a, a, a song and dance, but uh, I'm sure you guys can do it if you, you put your mind to it. If you don't feel comfortable using the metal, um, I've used it in the past. I've used the blunt, uh, this end of the, the hammer. You can see my hammer has kind of got a little bit of nicks in it because I would have used that before. And that's also how I install my, my pistons, which I'll show you guys that when I go to put this thing all back together. Um, 
I'm very pleased with this block. So I'm going to stop rattling and I'm going to finish getting these main caps off and uh, get this thing out because I'm going to bring it to Clinton today and get it all balanced up. So see you in a bit.